Welcome back. I'm Maurice Dubois. And I'm Christine Johnson. We begin with that crane that burst into flames and then partially collapsed. Happened this morning on the west side of Manhattan. 45 stories in the air at a building under construction. Video here shows the dramatic moments. The crane's boom came down, slamming into a building across the street. 12 people were hurt, including three firefighters. And here now is a live look from Chopper 2 at the scene. Tonight, we're learning more about the permits and inspection history at the building. CBS2 investigative reporter Tim McNicholas joins us now here in studio to break it all down. Tim? Christina Marie's building inspectors tell me the permits were up to date. There were no open violations at this construction site. They are now questioning the contractor, the operator, everyone involved. And this is not the first time the owner of the crane has faced questions from the city. Just below the scalding flames in this video from Wednesday morning, the name of the crane's owner is painted in bold yellow letters. New York Crane, which the Department of Buildings confirms is the New York Crane and Equipment Corporation. CBS2 has learned that same company owned a crane that collapsed in 2008, killing two construction workers near 91st Street and 1st Avenue. The company and its late owner, James Loma, faced a wrongful death lawsuit, and Loma was charged with manslaughter, then acquitted. Prosecutors had argued the company did not properly repair damage to the crane from two years before that collapse. Now, another glaring example of construction site hazards looms over Hell's Kitchen as inspectors try to figure out what caused Wednesday's fire and collapse. I'm afraid of it, and I always try to cross the street because I know the risk and I know the danger. Avoid walking under that construction site. This one and I are often up and down this block, so avoid it. A survey earlier this year from a construction consulting firm found there are at least 10 tower cranes up across New York City. This time-lapse video shared with us by a neighbor shows the crane that collapsed Wednesday moving higher and higher as construction progressed over the last six months. The Department of Buildings says they last inspected the crane and found no violations June 15th after sections were added to increase its height. The DOB says inspectors most recently were on the tower construction site July 10th as part of a routine enforcement construction inspection. We were sleeping and it felt like a bomb had gone off in the building. William Norlag says he had to evacuate his home this morning after the crane collapsed onto his building. Don't want to live in a high rise anymore after this. And in that wrongful death lawsuit regarding New York crane and construction and that 2008 collapse, a Manhattan grand jury eventually decided the families of the two men who died should be awarded money. The amount decided on was about $48 million. We've tried to reach that company about today's collapse, along with the operator of the crane and the engineer. The general contractor, Monadnock Construction, sent us a statement saying safety is a top priority and they are fully cooperating with all regulatory agencies. Christina Maurice. It certainly gives you pause. Tim. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Tim. And do stay with CBS2 and CBS News New York for more on today's crane collapse. We've also shared our conversation with a fire expert on our website, cbsnewyork.com.